Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Homeless Reptiles. Before we get started today, you're going to know somewhere in purple, but not in my regular shirt, because we have got to give a shout out, not that any of them watch anyway, to some of my favorite Wildcats. Our men's basketball team is ranked 11th in the nation and just won again. Hopefully they keep it rolling. I mean, just getting top plays on ESPN with, you know, Marquise Noel to Johnson and one-handed slams. It's just a hell of a fun basketball season in Manhattan, Kansas, and we ain't had one in a couple years, right? Uh, we, we go to all of them, whether we're good or not. So seeing these guys get to, you know, most of the team's all new. We got two guys left over, Marquise and Ish. The rest of them are newcomers. But watching them dudes thrive. And, and what about Ish? If you watch basketball, dude kind of hadn't been getting a lot of minutes. And now, last couple games, he's hit some huge shots. I'm enjoying basketball again. Our house is packed. It is a wonderful, wonderful uh, time. But none of you are here to hear me talk about K-State basketball. All you should be, because it's just fun. Um... And I know damn well nobody's ever here to listen to me talk about KU basketball. I could, but it wouldn't be very, very nice, so I'm just going to shut my mouth. Uh, but we're going to talk about some snakes today, and what I really want to talk about today is the evolution of a collection and kind of how that collection evolves, because there's a couple things that happen in there, and, and everybody wants to take the shortcut. Not everybody. A lot of people want to take the shortcut, which you can if you've got the money to do so, that's fine. We didn't, because we didn't have the money to do so. Uh, and so we're going to kind of tell you how our collection has evolved in a lot of ways and gotten some animals. So I'll just spur the moment. i got Caleb's going to be running and grabbing animals as we go to kind of show some of which are breeding, so we won't be able to pull some of them. So just kind of bear with me as we do this. To really give you the evolution of a collection, I have to go back to the beginning. And I can't tell you the exact year it started. I want to say it's probably around 2012. And that's not the year we started Olympus. That was uh, probably the year I got my first snake since getting my first snake and what i mean is i had a snake since i was in school uh and i had given that thing away because my wife Juan and i were looking at children and typical story she was afraid the boa constrictor would eat the baby and it was just not worth having the fight so the snake went away no big deal went to a good home uh wife went away later and so i said hell with it let's get some snakes a friend of mine pointed out that i should live the life i want thank you amanda and so i decided to go ahead and get another snake which got me, uh, you want to go grab him? You know which one it is, right? Oh, carpet. Kronos. Oh, yeah. Which got me my first snake. I'm going to say this was around, two, which is actually my second snake, around 2012, and I picked out this little baby jungle jag carpet python. And I was your very typical guy going into a pet shop, uh, you know, with no clue, right? I mean, the Internet's a thing, but I didn't do any damn research. I looked. I saw Shiny. I bought, I bought the setup I was told to buy. And here we are. And now I've still got that guy. He's going to go grab him for you, and we'll show him to you. This is an awesome snake. And this is why I like having a runner when I do these, because Kurt to follow me all through the entire house. So we brought this guy home. He was a bitty little guy. Oh, look at you. You're just so cool. Uh, are you starting to go into a shed? Mm, not too close. Just the lighting. So anyway, this is our male carpet python. He's now a proven breeder for us. But he was never bought with the intent to breed. I just had never seen anything like this and had never been around a carpet python, never even heard of a carpet python and thought, man, this is kind of kick ass. This is what I want. And there it went. So one thing led to another. You bit me a lot when you were young, didn't you? Yes, you did. You were just a little devil. They age out of it so nicely, though. You can see he is a super sweet snake. So realizing I'm behind the eight ball because I didn't do any research or anything, I started looking up all kinds of stuff and learning about these snakes and other snakes in general. Realized the explosion in ball pythons, all the colors that were out. I was into this when I was a youngin, way back in the uh, in the 90s. Uh, nobody gave a rat's ass about a ball python. Here, I'll go hand him back to you. And so it wasn't really a thing. <laughs> and now I'm like blown away by that. So I'm like, man, this is cool, and this is cool, and this is cool. And I decided I needed some more snakes. I really fell in, fell in love with, I'll pull this one out myself, uh, don't be locked, don't be locked, don't be locked. Okay, how are you going to be? You going to behave? With something like this. Now, this wasn't the snake. This is a zebra bee, right? I fell in love with these the first time I ever saw one online. I was blown away. They're even lighter colored as babies. You yeah, have just a little piece of skin there. It's a little bit, oh, I hate this time of year to run space easier to dry everything out. Anyway, one in one, so, so bad. Um, they were super expensive, and I'm not talking like $1,500, which $1,500 for me at the time would have been very cost prohibitive. Remember, I was freshly divorced. You're not going to do what you think you're going to do. That's what I thought. But like, you know, thousands upon thousands of dollars. And uh, so I decided, you know what? I can't afford that. 
but I started looking at the parts to make it, started thinking, man, that'd be fun. And that's why I decided, hey, you know, if I can't afford to buy one of these, I'll just breed one. And that's kind of where Olympus was born, um, from that thought right there. And I'm going to tell you that was somewhere around, you know, somewhere in the, that 2012 time. So then you look, and we end up with a collection of about, I don't know, five snakes maybe, maybe a few more. It's just we're kind of buying a snake here, buying a snake there. It's kind of growing. We produced our first clutch probably in 2014, our first set of eggs in 2014. Um, I remember cutting them on July 4th. It happened to be the 52nd day, and I just thought, how American, you know? And they were all trash. Like the whole clutch had gone to trash. It's my fault. It's inexperienced, right? Research doesn't matter if you don't have experience. you got to kind of have both sometimes or get lucky. So that didn't go so well for me. Stayed with it. 2015, we produced our first viable babies. At that time, this didn't exist. We didn't have a reptile house yet. Uh, we had it in a room in my house, which one of these days I will show you that room, how it is now, because it is a, it's a spare bedroom where we store board games, but it's not very big is the point I want to make. It looked much bigger on camera. That is also when Olympus Reptiles, a YouTube channel, I believe, was born sometime not long after 2015, probably circa 16 or so, maybe 17, I don't know. Um, but it was a very small room, very confined space, and that's where we were. And we're, we're adding things to it. We had this old shitty equipment that was handmade, and we were the third or fourth owner. I mean, it was, it was every bit of a budget operation you could imagine. We were literally trying to bring this up from nothing. Our plan at the time was long-term out. You know, it would be one of those things we kind of do, make a, have a little fun, make a little money on, and it would be kind of our retirement when I turned 50, make us some extra cash kind of thing. Um, obviously, that didn't happen. So we produced our first question to find one of those 15 babies for me. I s held some of them back. I sold some of those. Uh, and now our collection is a legit collection come 2015. Um, but not huge. I mean, but it, it's, a, it's a nice collection. This is one of the things we produced. Now, this... You're going to say, okay, it's a spider. I don't know why you're so proud of it. Well, it's a spider that happens to be Het Snow. It is uh, the, the mother to our snow holdback who is breeding right now. So we were able to start producing some animals, start some long-term breeding projects. We also hatched our holdback killer bee. She's out for breeding right now. Uh, so, like, there was a lot of things we were making and a lot of plants we were seeing come to fruition, a lot of excitement building. This was the point where I kind of felt like I could do this, you know, uh, so from 2015 to 2022, a lot of things have happened. I'll hand you this one back. And uh, we produced several, several babies. We bought several babies. The Lemon Blast Scala said he's also out breeding. I guess I can't go grab him. Do you want to find me something cool from the 18s or so? 18th? Yeah, sure. Why not? Well, he's looking for that. Uh, he'll find something. I'll show you. We produce. So, Give you an idea from 15 on to 18 where we're moving through. Uh, I also showed you a 20 in our zebra B female. Ooh, I know a good one. Oh, that's a 19. That one doesn't. That one doesn't count. I can't show you that one. 18's that hard to find? Did I have a bad year in 18? I couldn't have had a bad year in 18. I just saw a bunch of them. Oh, uh, well, well, 17's. Well, you're looking for an 18. We began to produce things like this in 17. I won't bring her too far over because she is gravid, so I want to support her weight. She's ovulated now. But we started making her first bells in 17. Kurt, do you remember how many of those we made? It was some ungodly number. I think like four or something. Four or five out of one clutch. We thought we'd make bells every year. We kept two, raised them up, sold the rest. We're like, why is everything this is so hard? That is like, we hardly ever make bells anymore. It's pretty sad. But we're going to do it. Damn it, it is going to happen. Oh, outbreeding. Is that the problem? That was outbreeding. Can't find us. All outbreeding. So, uh, 19 will work then. Find me a 19. 19. Actually, there's a really cool 19 that you should grab right over here. Yeah, I see. That was what I was thinking. 190406. Oh, you're going over here. Oh. oh, that one. You can do that one too. So, at this Funny point in time. This is oh, <laughs> our collection is really starting to grow and starting to do things. I mean, we're hatching things like this, which is. You know, this isn't our first world's first. That would actually have been the Kalitz, which is a 17, I think. We did our first world's first. Uh, this is probably the first one. It's a banana, calico, uh, black pastel, blitz. 
Yeah, banana. Thank you. That one's, I forgot the obvious one. So there's a whole lot going on here. Am I 100% sure that's all in there? No, I'm like 85 if I'm being honest. We'll find out when we breed it, but it does. I mean, things I'm sure on, if I'm missing anything, I'm missing the black pastel. Uh, that's just the way that the other ones were playing together, making me think that's there. But I, I do think the heavy spotting, too. I think we've got it all. A uh, really cool looking snake. So our collection is just really, really kind of growing up and going off the charts. And then you get to modern times. Let me put this one back in here for you. And uh, you want to grab me some of the coolest shit that you can find over there from 22 or something cool, I don't care. And we start having holdbacks this year. And this is 2023 now. So we're going to show you some things from like 2022. I showed you 2020 with the Zebra Bee. 2021 has some little bang up stuff. We'll kind of get to some of that where we kept some uh, like, you know, we're, we're making things like uh, a lot of freeway combos, things like that that we're able to, to hatch and keep. Oh, this thing's fucking smashing. This is a um, mahogany black pastel, I do believe. Uh, so this is a simple two gene, but you can see where our directions are going and just some really cool stuff we have. You know, uh, like the point I want to make though, as this collection, I know, you're just angry at the world. Let's not be angry at the world. Yeah. There you go. I'll let you go back up. <laughs> sure. Uh, as we started from very humble beginnings. This isn't meant to sound like, oh, I'm bragging that, you know, I'm a guy who pulled myself up from bootstraps and didn't have anything fresh off. And not just me. Kurt was fresh off divorce when this started, too. We both were fresh off of uh dwarf. if you've never been through one those are financially devastating by the way you don't come out of that unscathed you go from a two-income family not that i'm you know it's not the story where all oh, my ex-wife's a bitch and she's trying to take everything quite the opposite she wasn't that way at all that thing's cool um which we don't know what all's in here for sure but we know there is obviously zebra bee but we also think we probably got some maybe fire running around there maybe some yellow belly that's all possible. It's definitely not a super. It'd be way more blush than the super. The head would look different. Super pastel. So we're going to have to wait to see how many ages. But things cool as hell. Uh, I mean, obviously, we like the Xanthics. We're going to see a lot of that stuff. Oh, here. We'll give you all back. I'll plot one more while we're talking. Then we're still raising fair, isn't it? But it's just financially problematic. Speaking of 21s. Oh, you had a rough shed. You need cleaning in there. But I'll put you up here. This is a 21. See, it's growing pretty nicely. Um, we don't know what else in that either. I mean, there's possibly a pastel yellow belly and fire and exanthic, but we might be missing one. We might be missing the fire. We'll just have to kind of see. Uh, really cool snake, though. But the collection, if our collection can grow from the bootstraps with very, very minimal investment, and what I mean by very, very minimal investment is it's not like when I say we started adding snakes. There's a lot of snakes here I can show you we bought, too, you know, or it came to us from different people. Uh, go on, little one. Yeah. But we didn't buy them with our money after a certain point and what i mean by that is we left the money from the reptiles with the reptiles we didn't buy those reptile house with our money the reptiles pay for the reptile house all of those things became self-sufficient uh it just takes our blood sweat and tears and it's not meant to sound like a look at me you know how great we've done the point i want to make is if you're sitting there for you and it's 2014 and you've killed your first clutch or it's 2015 and maybe you've had your first clutch and you're at your 2015 in life, you know, and you're wondering, can you do it? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. And it doesn't take dropping a hundred grand because people who are selling you snakes tell you this is what you have to do. You can do that. And I'm not saying it's bad to, I'm saying you've got to do what's right for you. I see so many people who dump a bunch of money into it and they're not prepared and I'm a fan of growing your business a little slow. And the reason for that is, is simply this. By growing the way we did, which if you think, oh, man, I can't grow slow. I'm not patient enough. This is 10 years' time. And from a business growth standpoint, from the first time that Olympus was conceived, this is about eight years' time. You know, And I would say a lot of it's been in the last three years, if I'm being honest. We spent the first amount of time learning. Learning how to build that infrastructure what it would take to do that, how what our expenses really look like, what our time management skills are going to have to be, and we're still figuring that shit out half the time. Like, all of those things that are important into having this business, you know, and, and doing what you want to do, and still be able to give every day and enjoy it. Uh, 
and not have it be a financial crushing burden or weight. And as we've kind of learned how to do that, and then learned how to even pay ourselves when we do that, we've been able to move forward and accelerate um, without feeling a lot of, I mean, I'm not going to tell you there's no stress with it, because that would be a lie. I'm not going to tell you there's never days you're going to be down on it, because that would be a lie. I'm not going to tell you days where I'm sure I question, why in the hell did I put in this much effort? And I'm sure Kurt questions the same every now and then. But there are days, too, where this is just the most magical thing we could be doing, and everything feels really good, and it feels really good that once here we actually get a decent check. And watching that grow and grow and grow, and watching, like, our business value grow and our equity grow, and knowing that we've done it ourselves um, is a pretty awesome feeling. And if that's what you want, I want you to know that you can do it this way. You can do it however you want, but this is our blueprint. And there is absolutely, despite what my mother and my grandmother used to tell me, absolutely nothing special about me. Okay, We're not smarter than most people. We're not, um, you know, stronger than most people. Okay, I'm probably a little fatter than most people. But we're not anything out of the ordinary. I think, I think the only thing I could claim is, you know, I'm probably a little taller than most people. Kurt may not be as tall. So we put us together, we make one average height person. Like, there is nothing spectacular about who we are. And that means if we can do this, so can you. So can you. Um, if you're willing to take that amount of time, you can grow the same way. And now there's money in there. If I want to go buy a super expensive snake, I can do it. If I want to buy all metal racks, I can do it. If I want to do those things, I can do it. If I wanted to get a facility, I can do it. If I want to get a Caleb to help work in the facility, I got lucky on that one. But we were able to do it. But my point is, if we can do it, then you can do it. And I don't give a two shits what the economy is. I don't give two shits what the snake market is. I don't give two shits what the guy down the street tells you. I don't give two shits what the other guy selling snakes tells you. Good or bad. None of that matters at all. If you put your time and your effort in and you do it leaving the money there with them. It's not going to be easy. And also you're going to stub your toe. But you have to get up off the mat. That's what you got to do. Kurt, anything you want to add about that? No. Caleb, what about you? Yeah, that, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much covered. And that's not a shot at anybody who's telling you to buy the $45,000 snakes. I mean, if you have that money to spend, that's a project you want to get, that's fine. My fear is watching people grow so fast that they collapse in upon themselves. I don't feel that's good for the hobby because anytime I see somebody who gets in, gets excited, they tell everybody how excited they are, and then all of a sudden they're no longer excited because they, 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 they bought all this hype and they bought everything and then it's expensive to feed and it doesn't go right, and then they're, they're pissed and they're disenfranchised, they will tell even more people how much it sucked. And that hurts our hobby long term. I want people to get in and be successful. They're still going to buy those expensive snakes when the time is right, but what I would challenge you to do if you're getting into business is get your feet wet and make sure this is what you like. Get a feel for what you're doing and then, then go for what you want, you know, and what's expensive, I say it all the time, to, to you or to somebody else is different. $100 may be a lot to one person to, to invest in this and it may be nothing for somebody to invest 10000 and that does make a difference on where you're at on how much you can invest to begin. But if you're investing so much that it's causing you stress or not knowing how you're going to feed your animals or not knowing how you're going to eat or not knowing how you're going to do that, you're investing too much. Slow it the hell down, okay? Trust me on that. All right, that's all I got, guys. We're going to slide over to Patreon, and we're going to talk about the times I knew it was going to be great, and we're going to talk about intimately the times that I thought it was going to be a disaster. And both of those have existed. And if I can get Kurt to say his too, then I'll have him say that. But that's asking a lot because Kurt don't talk about emotional shit on camera. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.